This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Welcome to another episode of This Light. It's a bit delayed, isn't it? Yeah, it really should be tightened up. That's actually the first thing that I'm gonna do is work on the electrical plan. Wires and that. Because currently, we have an extension cable popping out of the back of it. Now that's hardly appropriate for a lamp that we've invested so much time and effort into. Look at this lovely pretty cable we have. It looks like rope, but it's not rope, so it looks older and more cool. You just mean braided. It's just braided cable. It's like vintage. Ah, come back. Only touch it if you're trying to make life easier, not if you're making life harder. Hello. There we go, a little cable gland to start the day. So I'm trying to work out now where I'm gonna have the cable come out of. I don't need to have it come out the back. We can kind of keep it a little bit more inconspicuous in this general area, I think. Oh, my arm is only just big enough. Cabling done. Next up, gonna weld on this little kind of bolt assembly, which is going to be holding this to the big arm. Ah, we haven't forgotten about this, have we? That's gonna go there. It's time. Wowie, that's heavy. Gotta stand it up and put the shade on. Hopefully not die. As we know, it's a very real possibility. All right, no pinchy fingy. I lift and then you slot. It is of crucial importance that you get it in the hole. I'm very well versed. Go on. Are you in? First time, good lord. It's not all the way in there though. Spit on it. <laughs> uh, you might just need to like wiggle it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no. It fit in there before. Yeah. Uh. I like what you're doing now. Nah, it's not gonna go, is it? Get in that hole! I think we've got to come back out. All right, you're going to lift that end up. I think it went in easier than it's going to come out. We've got to hoist it. <laughs> oh, great. This is going so well. To me, to me, like lift up and go to me. There we go. Oh, come on! Oh, oh, oh! oh. Yeah. Right, we need to tighten this thing up together. I don't, I don't think what we're doing is very smart. Uppity puppity. Oh, it's so obnoxiously heavy. If I let go, do you have it? I think so. <laughs> right, where do you want me to go? I don't know. <laughs> go on. Oh, oh. <laughs> Get in there, lift up, yes! <laughs> <laughs> hey, good time for a little perspective, huh? What the hell do we do now? Now, I do know one of the things I'd like to do while we make this project. And that has been something a little bit different. Document the process in photos and text. The world's largest desk lamp needs more than a couple of YouTube videos. It needs its own place in the internet. It needs its own website. And we're gonna do that with Squarespace. Step one of building a website with Squarespace is picking a template. So let's see what we think fits it best. We've got art and design, blog, portfolio, portfolio. And even within this subcategory, there's 56 to choose from. Quite like this, Reseda. I think this is very arty. So we're going to start with this design. And now we name the website. You know the deal with Squarespace, you can sell all sorts of stuff. You don't sell a land, are you? No, but I could if I wanted to. I could also sell appointments. Look at this, bookable appointments for clients. We could sell appointments for people to stand underneath the lamp because when this thing is done, it will be so dangerous that I think that you'd get quite the adrenaline rush. So I'm going to make a new page. Look at page layouts. Oh, I like this. We just go right ahead and get editing. Jamie's been taking photos through the project. We are now gonna pick some and start uploading them. All right, so we click this. We hit the little edit tool, replace, upload file. Boom, it's up. We really are able to just make the website exactly how we want it. I want this image to fit in there, and I want to put my text right here. It is so easy to move this exactly where I want it. If I want to bring this image down, easy peasy. And what's best is we can now see the mobile view, and we can see exactly how this is going to look on a phone. So does it automatically scale and change the composition for a phone? Automatically. You don't need to edit the website for a computer and edit the website for a phone. It'll do it all for you. 
All right, we have made good progress, but that has been 15 minutes of procrastinating from the actual project. Don't forget, if you want to build yourself a Squarespace website, squarespace.com forward slash forge, you'll get a free trial and then code forge at checkout will get you 10% off your first purchase. Should we see if we get this thing working, Jamie? Now, something tells me there is now absolutely zero chance that this is going to work the way it's meant to with springs. We might be in like proper pickle territory. All right, Jenny does it. All right, is that, that's it, is that stuck? Let's get this thing hoisted, shall we? So in order to lift this thing up and secure it for safety in the future, I think it'd be prudent to have some lifting eyes in it. We're gonna drill and tap and then weld. Ah! Yay! Oh, oh ow, finger! Oh! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna lock off. I need a hand jammer to pull on this. <laughs> you okay? Yep. What happened? You didn't lock it off. <laughs> oh, one more. Look at that, Jamie. That is the most dangerous thing I have ever created. Probably should have had the cable, you know, so that we could turn it on. How's that light look, Jamie? Do I look beautiful? Okay, how will I put that on this? I probably shouldn't stand there, actually. No, it absolutely should not stand I was directly underneath that, looked up, and it was like there. <laughs> this is so stupid. It's at this moment that I, I, I really think this project might not work. And all the people in the comments saying, oh, Alec, this project won't work. You can't just scale things up and expect it to work. You should have engineered this. And deep down, I knew they were probably always right. There was no way this was gonna work. I'm currently thinking about how on earth I could possibly attach this spring to that when the gap is enormous. We don't even know if the spring will stretch that far. Oh, I've got an idea, Jamie. Why didn't I think of that earlier? This is fantastic. We were wanting something to pick up with the spring to see how far we could stretch it. We can pick up the gantry crane with the spring. Ah! Right, right now, we need to go 43 centimeters. That's 40 centimeters. Bang! <laughs> off! Jamie, not the <laughs> time. <laughs> sucker. You did that to me the other day. <laughs> this is so much more scary. Did your, <laughs> did your life flash before your eyes? I was about to tell you, I was like, Jamie, please don't make any jokes. <laughs> uh... Right, anyway, you should put it back down and see if it returns. Yeah, so okay. We'll see if it returns to where it needs to go. That was 43 centimeters. It bent, it's opened up, it won't return to where it went. I think we reached the yield point. We went past elastic deformation into plastic deformation at about the 40 centimeter mark, which means realistically this spring can only extend about a third of itself. So the spring definitely won't extend to the length it needs now, but I've had an idea. If I put a link of steel between here, effectively an adapter, then the spring doesn't need to stretch that far. We might be able to avoid it going past its point of elasticity. <laughs> Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> it's going the opposite way, Jamie. There we go. Oh boy. <laughs> now we lower it down. Oh, it's not gonna explode. Wait, maybe it is holding it. Wait, could it be? Get out. Get out, Jamie. Holy, it's working. We need to order more springs right now! The springs have arrived. What are we doing? Trying to let it down? Oh, we're not going to put the, tip the metal ones on. I don't know how. I haven't yet designed the architecture for it. Like, I think we need to now measure the length that we require for it. Gently does it. It's pulling the lamp forward. Yeah, it's going over. Yeah? Damn, those suckers are under some tension. We've got these two springs in at the front, and there is a lot of tension that they provide. But it does give us a problem. We can't just pull this down to put the springs in at the back. When we look at the original, there is no place where all three of these springs are without tension. At some point, you have to be able to tension it in order to put the last set of springs in. And if we're not able to pull down with enough force to get this middle spring to the area that it is slack, I think we need a means of adjusting the length so that we can put it in and then shorten the length of it increasing the tension and having adjustability in the design to balance it out right. So I need to make some sort of, what's the word? I forgot the word. Turnbuckle. I need to make some sort of turnbuckle that's gonna hold two springs at the same time. <laughs> All 
Right, all of the springs are on. Here is how I did it. The springs are looped straight into the bar. I made a little bracket down here. They're looped into that. Then with some 16 millimeter all thread, through this little adapter, we're gonna be able to spin this nut, put tension on these back springs, adjust it, and so we're gonna do just that and see if we can get it to work. Dude, this is starting to look like it might work. Yeah, I don't know how much of it is just being supported by the rope though, so why don't I let off a little tension? Don't be aiming it at me. <laughs> okay, wow. The tension pulling it forwards is just so much. I can't pull it back. Oh my goodness, this thing's gonna drive me nuts. Right, that's gonna take forever for you to tighten that up. While you do that, I'm gonna take another picture of the website. Fabulous, it's a perfect time because things are going so well. All right, we'll see you in a sec. All right. All right, let's check these photos on it. Replace, upload file. So I've got this one picture in here. I wanna have another one here instead of this text or maybe as well as the text. So I've used like a preset which has this photo and this text here. But let's say I wanna alter it. I can just go add block, add another image and then I can then basically create a custom template. I've got this problem with the text which is behind this photo. So I can simply just bring that to the front. And then this image is actually a slightly different dimensions to that one. So I've got this weird gap on the top and bottom. I can just go in here and change the design to fill and then it evens them both up. And then there we go. Another section took about two minutes. You done? I don't know if I'm done, but I want to have another little play with it. See what happens if I let go. If I take all the tension off the rope. Oh, it sits like that. How cool. Ah! That is standing entirely on its own. There is no rope holding that right now. That is a freestanding angle poise lamp. Question is, do we have any further adjustability than this? Will it lift? Stay. Crap. It did not stay. This lamp sure knows how to play on my emotions because at this moment in time, I have zero hope or faith that this is going to work. And the lamp is perpetually making me fluctuate from having lots of hope to having no hope. Something about this lamp, the springs, the tension on the springs, whatever it is, it has not been holding its own weight when extended upright. See, it just goes right back down. See, that still takes a lot of force to lift up. The spring should be doing the bulk of that, right? See, that's light. It takes more force to pull down than it takes to lift up. Something about the leverages is not working for the amount of mass that needs to be moved. Something in here is wrong. Oh. I could adjust all the tensions. That's not a terrible idea, Mr. Steele. If I make that same block, I can adjust them all. How far down is it gonna go? Why does it keep going? Stop going down. No. Still doesn't work. All right, so while it does look very impressive at the moment, I want it to be able to stand up higher. And there is so much force with the weight of that lampshade that the springs just cannot pull it up high. So it's sat in this position instead of being able to come up some more. Having now made three sets of spring adjusters and tightened the daylights out of them, I feel I'm at the point that I am exhausting the capabilities of the springs. And so if the springs aren't gonna generate the force we need, I think I need to start changing the design so that we can have the mechanical leverage. My plan is to extend this lever and then increase the distance between this bar and these bars. And so in order to do that, we're gonna be needing to drill new holes in this top section. I think we're making progress. We've extended the leverage of this bottom strut, and now, when I push up, the shade goes up as well. We'll see what happens now when we extend the leverage down here. Moment of truth, Jamie. It has never stood taller than it has stood now. Oh my goodness. Look, the head isn't going down any further. Now we slack off this one. <laughs> That is fully self-supported. That just doesn't seem real. <laughs> Look how big it is! But now I don't think it is fully balancing. What I mean by that is the whole intent of this mechanism is wherever you push it, 
the spring tension is such that it creates this perfect kind of balance. I don't know if we're ever going to get to the point where that's possible. There is like algebra and maths and probably a completely different type of spring that would be required for that to happen. The simple fact that it is standing on its own weight, frankly, is a much better outcome than I thought we'd get for the last few weeks. That blows my mind. I love it. Let's get this thing neatened up and painted. Wiggle, Mr. Popple. Rotate that way. Now lift up and pull. It's, it's off. <laughs> Hang on, is it off? Oh, it's on the rope, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am so glad we have all this rope equipment. Right, we've decided that it looks like garbage. We're going to go buy some spray paint. It tastes pretty good. <laughs> 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 Oh, it's go time. is beyond ridiculous. It's enormous. And it is stood up entirely on its own steam. It's these springs holding it up. There is nothing else supporting it. Regrettably, we can't adjust it. The only way I can change the pose is by adjusting the relative tension of the different springs. And I forgot to thread the power cable through the tubing. Now, just how big is it? I hear you ask. That is 4.7 meters. As she currently stands at this slight little lean, it's a lot of lamp. And I was hoping that this was going to be the world's largest articulating desk lamp, but I was given a fright when somebody messaged me on Instagram with a picture of a random bridge that had big lamps on it. So I had to do some digging and I found out it's a bridge in Spain and a French company made an art installation of these massive Pixar style lamps, but nowhere could I find their actual height and size. So going off of how big they look, relative to human beings, how big the lampshade looked relative to them. As fabulous as their lamps are, I've decided that ours is bigger with no means of actually proving it. And so with that, we can now purchase a fitting domain. Worldslargestlamp.com is now our website. It showcases the story of this lamp and it was built using today's sponsor, Squarespace. It's effortless to build a beautiful website with them. I hope we have helped prove that to you. And I hope you go to squarespace.com forward slash forge free trial and then you get 10% off using code forge at checkout. Thank you for joining us on this project. I have had so much fun. We're going to secure it, by the way. Health and safety. <laughs>